What's up everybody? This is Gaming God and I am reacting to the Arms North American Open August 2020. And it's been a while since I've done a reaction video even though even though this video was came out on the 9th, I didn't get a chance I'm watching it today. I didn't get a, I didn't get a chance to watch it on the 9th due to focusing on Pokemon Cafe Mix walkthroughs, which I already finished the game yesterday. Alright? Alright, so let's see some fighting and let's get to it. This is part one. Well, good morning and welcome into the ARMS North American Open August 2020. I'm your punch by punch host, Jordan Kent, and joining me, I got a terrific one two combo of arms commentators. Let's start with my man, EE. EE, -E, I know you've been a fan of arms since day one. What are you most excited for? Um, honestly, Jordan, to be honest, it's been a long time since I've gotten an opportunity to like see some high level competitive play. So the fact that we would have been This is going to be my first time filming. This is going to be my first time filming an hour, a one hour video. And Coney, so, I, I really can't believe it. For a long time, we've got four terrific fighters that we'll introduce here in just a second. Oh, but we're going to see who these fighters are. Them? I know you've been following their careers and their trajectories for a while. Sure. So it's always interesting to catch back up with how people are doing and how people are progressing, especially sort of with their rise in the scene. And sometimes when we do these online events, we see some sort of dark horses come up or people that we're not familiar with that we haven't seen. This lineup is an all-star cast. We have four of the best players in North America here. Some of them have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best in the world. So I'm really excited to see the fist fly today. You mentioned the top four players. Well, they duked it out out of nearly 800 competitors over this weekend. And these top four will get a chance to fight not only for bragging rights, but in addition, our winner today will get a digital download code for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And the fighter I would have joined the two. ARMS tournament, addition, but I really don't have the game, so I'm really game. I'm going to watch. Don't worry, our runner-ups so won't go home empty glove. They I'm going to watch this tournament. My Nintendo Gold Points. So, so spoils yeah. and riches for everybody that participates today. Let's go ahead and take a look at our bracket and see who will be duking it out today. And you see here, it's the oh, best Astro Ninja, SQ, Para, and Slasha Whale Lord. Astro Ninja, somebody you're very familiar so with. So these are the players Astro in the yeah, semifinals. So Astro Ninja is a very the winner's case. semifinals. He's actually considered by many to be the best uh, currently active player in North America. If he's not the best, he's definitely up there. He was actually on top of the Season 3 rankings. I couldn't find uh, the actual rankings anywhere online, but I do know that they exist. I know this guy's at the top Astro Ninja, nobody to mess with. One of the best Dr. Coil players in the game. And EE, e., you and Para sort of have a special connection when it comes to the character selection. Absolutely. It wasn't always that way because I know he used to play Springman, but now that he's on the Ninjara train, I definitely rock with him a lot. I mean, this is a very accomplished player. I think he's like only uh, one of two uh, North American players to ever take a set off Pega, who's considered like the best in Japan, like one of the best I was ever done. And so when you got somebody like that in the bracket, you can already expect fireworks. Let's go ahead and take a look at our rules here as we dot our I's and cross our T's for all the fun action today. As we mentioned before, four-player double elimination bracket. All right, In double addition elimination. to that, you've got best of five games wins a match. And then we will have 99 seconds per round. It will be in arena mode. So the action is fast. It is certainly furious. And, EE, e., you were talking earlier about high-level elite play. What is the difference that we're going to see here with these players that makes them so different why have they risen to the top amongst nearly 800 different competitors? Well, I think, I mean, it's not just a combination of just, you know, you know, picking your particular arms for a situation. Like, you got to play the stage too, right? Because you got some occasions where you got plenty of space to kind of zone and, and take your time and stuff like that. But when you get in those close quarter battles, you know, what are you going to do when somebody's really pressuring you? A lot of those character attributes themselves, those are going to be, you know, impeccable for getting out of situations. Like, for me, I love Ninjar, just his ability to kind of escape and just counterattack. Like, that to me is big. Obviously, somebody like Dr. Coyle, always levitating, always in the air. So it's just kind of like those mix-ups and what arms you elect to pair with your character that I think is really just going to make the difference between like you know what do you see succeeding more the defensive play or just the rush down aggressive type and coney to tag that as we mentioned 42 different arms 12 different characters Woo! i won't do the math that's a whole lot of numbers right there <laughs> a whole lot of possibilities but there really seems to be this marriage of finding the right arms to match your play style to match the fighter that you want to go with 
Sure. I mean, there are some arms that pair beautifully with certain characters. You have levitating characters like Twintel and Dr. Coyle that really want to keep people at bay. Dr. Coyle, of course, has that third arm that she can use at pretty much any time. So she wants to find things that can kind of keep people at a distance. And it kind of goes what, with, with what E.E. was saying, where you want to find the right stage for that. Something with a lot of ground, uh, a lot of space for you to back up and sort of play defensively. I think it's going to be interesting to see what these guys elect to choose because... What it really comes down to is it's a marriage of how heavy the arm is, whether it's light, medium, or heavy, what the function of the arm is, whether it's you know a blocking arm or it's a curve arm, it's a straight arm, and the character. So we're going to see a lot of different combinations here today. Really excited to see what we have. So much to break down, but it looks like we're getting ready for the action here. So let's oh, yeah. go ahead and get you set for our very first match here in the Arms North American Open August 2020. We'll find out who our champion will be here very shortly as we get rolling here. A lot of excitement, as we mentioned. You'll have a set of curated stages to choose from that will be randomly selected. EE, as you pointed out, these stages, there's a lot of things you have to factor in. So it's not just a plain vanilla stage every single time. And Coney, once again... Every single character is going to have some special attributes that you need to use to your ability. But also, if you're fighting against them, Cone, you need to be aware of what they can do to possibly turn the tide of a match. Yeah, every character has at least one attribute that is really sort of a signature to them. Obviously, Max Brass has the whole buff-up technique where if he gets you on the ground, he's kind of a win-more character. Meanwhile, Dr. Coyle has her third arm and just can levitate forever. Lola Pop has the inflation. Uh, Min Min has that kick that she can do where she can sort of um, where she can knock away an arm. We see that in Smash also. Min Min actually the latest <laughs> character in the Fighters Pass. Really. Oh, She's Min Min can do that in Smash. But yeah, so we've got one of the and best Min Min players arms. in the world. We've got a top Dr. Coyle. We have an excellent Ninjara. And then we also have a Master Mummy who I'm incredibly excited like, to see. Why didn't they put Ninjara in and Smash? Even one thing that we're going to be referencing frequently during these matches is the rush mechanic and how that is really something you need to manage throughout an entire match. Tell us a little bit more about what you need to keep in mind when you use your rush. Well, I think for, you know, a lot of times I, I, that I've seen in the past is like sometimes people kind of use rush when they're kind of getting in like panicky situations, you know what I'm saying? Like get a little panicky and just getting pressured. So you want to be able to maintain it to an extent where it's like, okay, when I'm putting it out there, I'm getting maximum damage, right? I'm lowering that meter and just capitalizing because also off of that too, remember you can kind of get juggles in between there as well and then just kind of get that final pop at the end. Uh, which I think a lot of people go for. And, and at the start of a round two, knowing you're going to get it back, like I see a lot of times that's when the best uh, time to kind of exhaust it and try and put some pressure on early. But you just kind of got to get calculated with it. You don't ever want to like make it too transparent because there's too many counters for that. We're still getting set for our first match here in the Arms North American All Open right. in August Let's get that first match When you ready. take a look here, Coney, at I'm sort really of this excited. rock, paper, scissors that always exist in a lot of fighting games, what does that look like in arms? Because, again, the action's so quick, you really have to react fastly. Oh, there's no audio. There's no audio. Looks I... like Coney's giving us a terrific explanation right now at this moment. Sorry about that, everybody. There we go, Coney. I'm sorry, my keyboard was click-clacking away. That's my fault. Didn't want to be rude. I, mean, I, said, well, I, said, Cody right there. I said the hottest stuff I've ever said. I'll never be a uh, right, What I'm saying is that uh, it really is sort of a mix of a bunch of different things. Um, so the weight of the arm is very important. Obviously, the heavy arms are much slower, but they can go through the lighter arms. The lighter arms are much quicker, and sometimes they can even get around. Like if it's a boomerang or one of the bird arms, they'll be able to sort of clock somebody in the side. Um, they can also find ways to sort of negate rushes. That's one of the best utilities of them is if you can get that boomerang arm around somebody as they activate their rush, mm -hmm. meanwhile, it feels like uh, if you try to use a straight arm, like a roast or toast or something like that, it'll just get stuffed out. But if you use the sidearm, it can go around, whack them. They just lose their entire meter, which would be amazing for you. Um, just so many different sort of elements at play with these arms. Also, that's not even mentioning the elemental attributes. Obviously, you've got the electric, which disables your arms. You have the fire, which does a little bit more damage and causes knockdown. There are just so many things at play. And I'm really interested to see what these guys elect to do as we get into the tournament. Maybe we're going to see some adaptation down the line where they decide, okay, this arm isn't working for me. Let me go with this one instead. Yeah, it's a really good point. And EE and arms, it really seems like being able to condition your opponent and read their recoveries and almost anticipate their movement is the key to being very successful. 
Oh yeah, I don't, I don't think there's kind of any question about that. Um, that's that's one of the major things. Like, oh, uh, that's why I think the tournament is starting now. All right, this player is playing as Min Min, and I don't know who the green hair, hair the green haired girl is. I didn't. I don't even play arms, so. All right, well let's get the action started here. Astro Ninja versus Askew, and already. Oh, Askew is Min Min. Astro Ninja is the green haired girl. Yeah, Askew is uh, one of the top Min Min players, if not the top Min Min player on the planet. So you're gonna see him sort of using that that kick from Min Min, using that dragon arm where the left arm gets powered up until she gets knocked down or sort of grabbed. So we're going to have to see how he covers the space right now. Astro Ninja doing an excellent job of levitating. With oh, dang. Mobility, pops the rush, but gets oh, grabbed right out of it. Dang. E -E -E, Astro Ninja airballing with the rush, and that's something that can really turn the tide of a match. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's what I was talking about. You got to be, you know, pretty diligent and, and, you know, pace yourself with that. Like, right there, you just see that... Those cats are going for it again, but just, again, the pressure. I think the problem is everybody's just really well prepared for it, and this is obviously the opening match. Might be some nerves, but we're seeing a pretty opening, uh, good, even contest to open things up. Min Min's Astro HP is low. A couple of taps away from getting KO'd. Has to avoid the rush attack. Don't forget, chip damage will not KO you, so ask you trying to move right oh, around. Oh, dang. That charge left dragon. This is with the throw. Oh! And I thought Min Min, and I thought Askew was going to lose. Coming back from the ashes rising up and getting the dang i was i was board. not expecting really that showing the power of mobility and maneuverability using those dodges to be able to get around the arms askew just using every tool in his arsenal can't land the rush there but that beautiful play after he was stuck in the corner blocking the entire rush comes out and wins the round but it's going to take one more to win the game askew with the buff and the bub going with oh the and able to negate the rush attack once again from Astro Ninja. So Askew doing a great job, EE, -E, playing defensively at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it seems like the rushes just really aren't getting too much benefit at the moment. So you seem like more of a game. I mean, see his arms, they're in a little bit of trouble. Notice, Ooh. oh my goodness, the disable as well. This is a really strong position. And I love the fact that... Oh, yeah. Do, right? Beat her up. Really working on your side, even though Askew... Almost the there. Almost there, Askew. Askew, that rush cancel able to really retaliate quickly, but don't forget Astro Ninja has a chance to go ahead and apply even more pressure at this point. Astro Ninja sitting there with that rush attack ready to go here. Astro Ninja Oh, with the left now Askew Astro Ninja. We'll gets go ahead knocked out. As we head to a third round here. He it looking pretty strong to honestly to all right we're on like, round three. Oh, the final round right away so it's good to keep things on even footing and then coming in this astro ninja with the rush so you might be looking for him to kind of let that go immediately maybe try and get some value out of it and have another one. Oh, he's, snap go right there yes perfect timing perfect she's beating her hard 250 coming out from astro ninja here comes the third arm as well too that'll act as an additional toaster for Astro Ninja, Askew now is a rush attack ready to go. I'm trying to apply some pressure in the corner, but that's going to be negated by Astro Ninja. And Coney, you see some of the warning signs pop up. Can Askew take advantage of it? Yeah, what we're noticing is that Askew is just not really landing these rush attacks. Astro Ninja is just playing so defensively, so much on his back foot that it's really difficult for Askew oh, to land those rushes. He is staying in the game on the he's floor. Using that mobility just so well, using that dragon arm, getting that grab barely all the way through but he needs to land this rush i think to be able to close it out the rush is coming out from astro ninja but it's not enough Askew defend yourself job sniffing that out astro ninja trying to apply even more pressure has to be careful oh, the rush attack ready to oh go. yeah see, puncher puncher cancels the throw to quickly throw out the rush attack that, now that's what i want to see more good concise rush play like that right that was far from being transparent oh cool dang Minmin gets knocked out again. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not, it wasn't Min, Min it was Astro Ninja that, get, that gets knocked out. Alright, Askew wins. Fine job of defending against some of those rush attacks coming out from Astro Ninja here, Coney. And when you look at that dragon arm capability of Min, Min Askew really utilizing that and making sure that they don't get knocked down. To so Askew down. gets one point. Yeah, it's a great way of forcing pressure on your opponent at all times because it puts that little idea in the back of their head like, I have to knock this person down. I have to get that charge away from them. Sort of similar to Max Brass, like I was talking about before. If you don't get a hard knockdown on that character, she's going to retain that charge for so long. And you saw with the buff and the buff, all right, we're on the like second part. Arms, just kind of big fists. And if you don't get rid of that right away, it's going to stuff so many things coming your way.
Fry Blast and Roaster coming out for Skew and Men Men. We take a look at Astro Ninja. Astro Ninja changing things up here with the Fun Chuck as well as another toaster going once again. So, right now, Astro Ninja trying to find some positioning. We've got Ribbon Ring that we're taking all of our oh, action. Oh, Ribbon right Ring. Now, you know, those boxes will pop up. Oh. They are destructible, but that's something that's another that monster the, here, EE, that Is that the name of Astro Ninja's actually, character? Absolutely, and you see it right there already. Just some, uh, uh, Dr. Cole getting that high ground. And, you know, you don't tend to get it for too long, just given the nature oh, of the stage. Oh, dang. Fluctuating, but it is something to take advantage of when you can be able to Oh, my you gosh. You just in a better position, and you just see... Astro Ninja, I mean, he's already got the ability just floating over there. He's already put himself in a five position. Oh, right. she knocked down Min Min. Astro Ninja, KO. no issues whatsoever Dang. in that very first round. Now we take a look at Askew. Askew's gotten one game on Astro Ninja. Astro Ninja trying to tie things round up two. here. Askew goes back to both the buff and the buff this time. Astro Ninja, no changes, worked last time. Now, we see the distance being taken by Min Min here, Kony, and Askew really trying to keep their distance, but making sure that those boxes don't come up and create another obstacle that they have to navigate. Yeah, I think oh, to do this yeah. Round. Double rush coming out. Finally, Astro Ninja able to land a hit, but only got 100 damage from it, roughly. I think what Askew is trying to do is hold the center of the stage. Astro Ninja is forced in the corner, and because that he can't use these platforms to his advantage, being able to rise up. I mean, Dr. Foyle is already levitating. Imagine when she's on the box as well, being very difficult to get away from her. But Askew kind of gave up a little bit of space there for the double rush. Both these guys trying to charge up their meters as Astro Ninja has another one. Oh my god. Uh, Astro Ninja avoiding that incoming arm, answering back with the rush attack. Astro Ninja back in control Askew here. I think is going to lose again. Astro Ninja doing a fine job of using that levitating capability. And then Astro Ninja will get a Askew, point. But Askew has a rush meter ready to go. It comes out at this point, but a huge costly whip here, EE. -E. Yeah, again, again, just not getting maximum uh, potential off of that rush, and it is going to be costly, as you see. I mean, they're pretty, you know, that means they're pretty much evened up, but notice Astro Ninja, he's got his rush online. He's going to be looking to get, maybe create an opening with the fun chuck, one of, the, one, of the, uh, one of my favorite personal arms in there as far as, like, just how it changes the ground and air state. Uh, but he's kind of got the corner pressure right now, trying to just push the advantage a little bit. i got to imagine he's going to go for that rush sooner rather than later at this point. Eight seconds left. Astro Ninja oh. getting one more final bop with the toaster. So Astro, Astro Ninja, Ninja wins. Will go ahead and take a game. So now we're tied at 1-1. One, one. All right, Astro we're Ninja tied. Tony doing a fine job of making some adjustments as we got Astro seven, Ninja wins. Game. Askew stealing the first one, but Astro Ninja leaving no doubts in that second one. I think the stage really played to his strengths well. He wants to sort of sit back, create space, stay as far away as he can. And because of the obstruction... Uh, the platforms coming up and being able to jump on those, being able to knock those away when he wants. I think he get, had a much better shot of sort of controlling space around Askew. And uh, Askew, his big problem in the first game was not being able to land those rushes. This time, Astro Ninja really right. took advantage of that, landed nearly every rush. So we're going back to Let's sparring. Let's see who could win this. Sparring ring, just your plain vanilla stage. Nothing special, just pure competition that takes place in the heart of it. Take a look at the different arms that we have right oh, now. Oh, dang. As he gets thrown right now by Astro Ninja. Astro Ninja EE -E going back with the Fun Chuck. We saw a lot Puncher. of in that second game. What do you like about the Fun Chuck? Well, honestly, I mean, it's just the fact oh. that you know, it, all, it acts as kind of like a shield, too, when, when you're in a state uh, when they're throwing some arms at you as well. The fact that it, it kind of changes the uh, direction. Uh, dang, she's punching well. Min really hard. Reason, honestly. Honestly, on a stage like this, too, like, this is pretty much all about who's going to win neutral, right? There's no gimmicks to take Oh, Min Min is almost that. down. That's kind of what Astro Ninja is. Oh, and, and Min Min is down. Astro Ninja carving up a skew that round, connecting with the rush attack, and then a 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two combo of that toaster and fun chuck. So, a skew has really been knocked well. A skew here, Cody. How do you get oh that Oh, my track? God. Min Min is being the payback. This is the play. He needs to lock... Astro Ninja down, put him in the corner where he's uncomfortable. Min Min is showing some payback. His arms to the side, trying to catch the dashes and the levitation. 
but it's such a gamble there. He actually got 160 off the double hit, throws out the grab, the burn up a little bit more meter. Oh, shield yourself, man. Does, so he's going to block that entire rush. I think he's playing this beautifully. He just has to constantly be holding forward and try to put Astro Ninja in a compromised oh, position. Oh, yeah. Askew gets the throw and a full rush meter to complement that. Askew, Askew, Askew is getting stronger. He's once again getting a chance to retaliate. Astro Ninja trying to find some mobility. Gets oh, you're almost done. Game. You're almost Askew done. doing a fine job of landing some connections here. Askew looking to close All this right. out. He does with the right-handed buff. So very impressive performance from Askew to bounce back into this one. Also got to appreciate the fact that Askew kind Final of... Final round. Okay, I have him at this low meter. There's no reason to exhaust my rush. I can save that coming in uh, to this one. Oh, you see, just she's to getting the punched. A little too slow on the uptake being in the air. So that's going to actually get advantage for Astro Ninja as both rushes get exhausted. Astro Ninja brings out the Tri-Blast in the party. Askew has got the bub as well as... Oh roast. my god. 78 seconds left. Askew trying to avoid some of these. Askew, great counter there, Coney. Able to get back in control and regain neutral. Beautifully done. And you can just see these guys so evenly matched. That's why we're here in the final round. Whoever takes this is going to take the whole set. Both of these guys just playing to their ability so hard. You can see Askew trying to farm that rush. He's trying to be able to counter rush. When oh, Astro Ninja lets it go, he gets the oh, okay, it again. Hit, and he's going to combo that into a rush and get the win. You could see Askew All right, a little Astro Ninja there. gets He's throwing out arms, trying to get a the rush second zone, point. Just in case something like that was about to happen. But Astro Ninja is able to pull the trigger a little bit earlier, and he's going to take it. Astro Ninja taking the second game, so a 2-1 lead in this match, EE. But as Coney described, just a beautiful combo. You saw the explosion coming from the Tri-Blast, which led perfectly into the rush attack. I mean, that was just a straight-up hog play, right? You know what I mean? Like, that just kind of made your, your jaw drop for a second because it's like you're looking for those kind of follow-ups, and then when the opportunity finally presents yourself, the opportunity just kind of closed out the round, put yourself up 2-1. I mean, he couldn't have played that any more perfectly. So Astro Ninja bouncing back after dropping that first game has taken two games in a row. We now head to the mausoleum, or of course in the middle. If that platform breaks, there will be a trampoline. So we will have fun if that eventually <laughs> shatters. Let's go ahead and pick it up. Askew not really looking to change anything too much. Continues to go here. Astro Ninja going against Askew. Astro Ninja got a full rush meter at this point. Trying to launch out that tri blast. No luck at this point. But then here comes a rush attack and oh another combo. Oh my god, another rush attack from Astro Got Ninja. It all the way once more with the full rush. You can see Askew doing what he can. He has the rush of his own, so we're going to have to see how he responds. But do you hold it? No, he's going to let it go. I was wondering if he was going to try to hold it for the next Astro one. Ninja was shielding. He tries to let it rip, but it's not going to land. And I think Askew. All he needs to do here is just farm as much rush as he can for the next. I think that's why he's throwing out so many grabs, because grabs do give you the double arm, sort of the rush farming. And I think he knows this might be sort of a lost cause. Oh! Yeah, go out and did Mimin got knocked down? So yes, Astro he did. Ninja, once again, he, he just very wise play with that rush, not letting any of them go to waste at this point. And Astro Ninja in full control. Let's see if Askew changes anything up, cycling through a few potential arms. We see that roaster on the right, and of course that buff on the left. Astro Ninja having a lot of success with that tri blast at this point. Astro Ninja up in the air, connects with a 1-2, gets the knockdown, trying to move around another knockdown, EE, e. it's all Astro Ninja early oh in this one. These are these hot starts that we kind of start to get accustomed to seeing Astro Ninja after that first game that he lost, you know what I'm saying, it's just that that's kind of just been his go-to, and already disabling an arm, and just see the pressure coming out, very smart, gets rush the rush attack time. Not the best time on that, not going to get too much out of it, and ooh, Dang, Min Min has gained the rush attack. Askew catching a little bit of a break trying to mount some sort of comeback at the moment. Pretty even footing, but he's definitely down a couple of games. Askew oh, my God. Minman is almost Askew done. Still on the ropes here, though. Trying to battle back and not get eliminated. Astro Ninja just needs to take this round to move along in our bracket and claim the match. Oh, the one-two coming from Astro Ninja. Astro Ninja trying to connect with that tri-blast. Oh! And that blast mechanic. Just so oh my god, pressure. would you look yeah, at that? An epic you finish. Corner, you're stuck blocking, the explosion is going to pop off, and you know that you just have to stay in that shield for a little bit longer, which could put you in a very bad position. Same as the nade, which is an arm that we see a lot of people using. We haven't seen it yet, but there's only been one set. Wouldn't be surprised to see it pop up in just a little bit. But yeah, you could tell that uh, by the end of that set, I think 
Astro Ninja really got a hold of Askew's blocking patterns and how he sort of maneuvered around the arena with his dodges and was able to put that tri blast there every single time. Very well played by him. Yeah, and Astro Ninja, EE, e., what about just the job they did? You go ahead and you lose the first game, but you get your bearings. And we talked about the adjustments that you make, and we saw a change in gloves. The double toaster at the beginning, where you drop the first game, then you finally throw in the fun chuck as well as the tri blast to mix things up. I think those, yeah, I think those mix ups too are where he saw a lot of success because essentially, you know, as Tony pointed out, he was just kind of like had a good lock for his movement and where he was trying to go. So a lot, you know, you get the fun chuck out there along with the tri blast. Those are good cutoff options, right? Those are good pressure options as well. So it really enabled him to just start to kind of mount the comeback and really askew performed well, but didn't really have a consistent answer. You know, what I'm saying a lot of whiff rushes and, and opportunities lost that Astro Ninja did not let it get away, get away from him. Let's go ahead and take a look at our updated bracket as Astro Ninja will advance to our winner's final. Astro All right. Ninja coming Astro back. Astro Ninja goes to the Takes winner's final. To one, actually, and we got Para Steve and Slosher Wailord we in the winner's Para taking on Slosher Wailord. Next so if winner's of, uh, final. And, Pokemon, and figure out what that means right there. But loser's final. Already Astro Ninja Astro. adding to the impressive resume, as we mentioned before. Dr. Coyle, such a difficult opponent to face off against in addition. Sure. But you talk about the adjustments here. And, Coney, you get set for this next matchup here between Para and Slosher Wailord. And Slosher Wailord is the one that interests me because you look at a potential master mummy, a heavyweight, and what that means. When you're working as a heavyweight, Coney, what is one thing you have to keep in mind when you're going against maybe some more mobile characters? It's all about conservation of movement. You don't want to make any missteps. You have to be very deliberate with all of your actions. It can be very difficult. I do believe that Slosher Wailord is playing a little bit more Lola Pop lately. But I, I think it's sort of a situation where he always has that as a threat in the back pocket, especially if he sort of catches on to his opponent's habits. He says, oh, he's let me block a lot. That might be somewhere where I want to go Mummy, because if you don't know, Mummy actually heals for 10 damage for every second that he's able to shield. So if he finds out that Para isn't really pressuring him on his shield as much, he can say, okay, I'm going to go Mummy. I'm going to try to force him to grab by blocking as much as I can, try to get those habits. I think we will see a Lola pop here, but... The mummy is always there if he's feeling a little spicy. And EE, e., we saw with Astro Ninja in that previous match the value in being able to follow up with combos. Obviously, you're not landing a ton of punches because both fighters are so capable of just dodging arms as they come out. But when you do get that connection, you have that small window, and you really got to make the most of it to follow up with those combos, especially as we saw with that rush attack, to go ahead and take that second game. Oh, absolutely. And I think just being, being able to increase your damage output, that, that's really what it's all about. Like, this game does offer a variety of ways to just kind of get those sneak those juggles in there as well. And that's why I think I would like to see the Lola over a Master Mummy simply because I feel like her defensive options, like, right, she's not Lola the fastest Pop. character, but her defensive options are certainly, I feel like, a little bit better. And going up, you know, Tastic against somebody like Carl, who's kind of piloting this Pinjar, you're going to kind of want to have a little bit of speed on your side as well. Well, E.E., e., you wanted candy, and here is Lola Pop. We've got Para going as Ninjara Slosher. Oh, so Slosher Wailord is Lola playing Pop. as Lola Pop. And now Pop. we go ahead and bring this to an interesting stage here, because now here we are at Buster Beach, and you see that sort of bench in the middle and the slopes. You've got a lot of different things you have to navigate here, Tony. Yeah, I love this stage so much. You can see people either opt for this side of the stage or try to go down the curve for the other one. Looks like we're agreeing to fight around the kitchen table right now. And eventually we might move down depending on who corners who. Slasher Wingward having difficulty to not land the rush as Para has one of his own. Let's oh. see how he uses that. Yeah, there it is. The vanish mechanic trying to dash in, but actually it gets blocked for the rest of it. See Slosher just puff up with Lola Pop right there to negate that rush attack. Slosher using the dragon and the Biffler to apply pressure. That dragon catches as well as blinding Para. Para, left arm in danger. Para trying to go with that roaster, of course, as well as the tribals. Looking for the stun here. Slosher with a full rush meter ready to go. Being very judicious about when they want to use it. Para is almost finished. Spot over the bench, connects with the Biffler, followed by the dragon. Might not even oh. I'm going to go ahead and just get you with a few charged arms. When you got him down to a sliver of percent like that, a little bit of health, you do not need the exhaust your raw brush because you already know, like, they're already being pressured for, like, the last 10 seconds. Why do I need to go ahead and just give away this three? Oh, oh my and God. And you see him taking advantage, getting a little bit of damage right off the start. Slosher getting one-two on the rush attack, but Coney following up with a beautiful throw. 
Yeah, that movement was just so high, man. He jumped right over. The Look at his jumps. He's just barely over that dry bolt. His maneuverability is just absolutely insane. He got that full stage grab, too. It just looks like oh. he's in Para's head. But now he's stuck in that corner of Buster Beach. He's got to fight his way out. Right now, he's got these arms that take so long to Dang, retract. Dang, that was a sick move. Something of an offense as you see Slosher right now on the retreat. Very good point. Slosh are able to create a little bit of distance. That's exactly what they're looking for. Para trying to close the gap, but Para in danger of dropping this very first game. Oh, Slosher will and Lord wins. Slosher closing things out here. Well Dang, what a sick here. finish. Lola Pop was playing exactly where they wanted to. Slosher was keeping the distance, not allowing Ninjara to get up close and apply that pressure and get them back into a corner, which is where they struggle with sort of those slow developing arms. With all the conservative rush use at the you know previous match right there just kind of saved it for the next round but right there using it just completely put it to rest in that ending uh sequence that was actually beautifully played so good to see the lola pop come out not disappointing either i like the combo of the biffler and dragon as well too coney again one item that can sort of sweep across the area and cover a lot of the escape routes but in addition you have also all right the biffler that well so para has a different character <laughs> Yeah, for sure. It's it's sort of like in Mario Kart when you get hit by the blooper. You just have this obstruction on your screen. You're thinking, what is this going away? I can't see anything. But we do see the switch from Para off of Ninjara over to Kid Cobra. A little bit faster. Also have a switch on arms here as the popper. I oh, King Cobra is the name of the fighter. Yeah, so we'll see how this goes. I think first order of business is going to have to be to get rid of these pillars. The slasher is just maneuvering around them so well. Slosh are doing a fine job of using the pillars in DNA Lab. Remember, when you go down in the middle, you don't lose any speed as you maneuver up and down the stairs here. Kid Cobra and Para trying to move around the pillars. No luck right now. Slosh are doing a fine job of just keeping the distance. That dragon gets blocked, flat back, trying to provide a little bit of shield coverage against these slow developing arms. But the dragon reaches up and over. And oh, dang. Oh, Para my God. With a big time rush attack. Absolutely, and that's what he needs, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, you're in a situation. That rush right attack now, was insane. Boy, your main character kind of getting blown out there, so switching over to the kick over. I love the clap back, gonna provide some extra defense, especially with that uh, dragon on the side of Slosher just coming at you. Nice one two combo. The Biffler able to connect, leading into the dragon. Slosher with a rush attack. Cody, do you start thinking about using it to close out this match? Oh, that's the gamble, right? Is he going to hold on to it, or is he going to wait for the next round? I would have initially said to hold on to it, but now it's getting a little dicey. He's got the rush. Ten seconds left. He has to make a decision. Looks like he's just standing still. Five seconds. Para is going to dare him to do it, hiding behind. He puts out the grab. Is it going to be enough? Down. I don't think so. Oh, it turns out. It. Just like you said, the throw did, was just did, a little too late. Did Slosher you know, won? Got damage, but wasn't enough, and... Interesting. We'll look back at that slosher choosing to hang on to the rush attack with about 10 seconds left. And here Para answers with oh one my 320 EE -E to get the party started. I'm saying, I mean, that's just got to be frustrating to lose the round that previous way because you just you see rush attack him, time. Like, takes like three hits to knock him down. So yeah. he kind of had that in his back pocket. Like he knew where that clock was. So very good time management on his part to keep himself in the lead. And yeah, see a pretty even game. Oh my God. Ball. Oh my god, Slash is gonna lose. Para doing a fine job of negating that rush attack not too long ago. Almost at a rush attack of their own here soon. A couple of charged arms coming out, misses with the throw. Para getting Lola Pop in the corner with the throw, that kid Cobra throw. Remember, 175. Lola Pop trying to answer back with the rush attack. It does, but oh Lord my god, Slosher lost. Rush attack of their own will go ahead and take this game. Such a beautiful parry. He blocked it and then immediately dashed in, which gave him a small moment where he could let that rush fly. And he does, and he takes the whole set with it, just says, I'm done with this. I'm winning this one. I'm letting it go right now because he saw his opening. Very well done. And you could just tell how evenly matched all these guys are. I mean, in the first set we saw it between Askew and Astro Ninja. Now we're seeing it again as we go 1 1. There are no blowouts here. And he, we saw the switch to Kid Cobra going from Ninjara to Kid Cobra. You wonder now if Slosh is going to make an adjustment with Lola Pop, whether it's the arms that we're going to see or the character choice. Let's go ahead and find out. We'll right. revisit things once again at DNA Lab. No, let's this go ahead and run it back. Here. Same arms, same characters. Let's do this thing. Slosher, keep in mind. 
hung on to a rush attack when they were almost at the verge of stealing a round. Yeah. So we'll see if Slosher tries to be a little bit more aggressive here. Yeah, that's probably that's probably going to be the name of the game at this point. I love what we're seeing though already from Carr. I just I think this this pit Cobra is suiting him better, right? He's got the speed and obviously the protection of the clapback is going to be good while still allowing him to get some damage with the popper. Like he's really just applying a lot of pressure, and it seems like Slosher from the jump maybe getting a little overwhelmed, not accustomed. Thinking this is going to be a consistent back, he has to deal with that. That rush comes through, it might just finish the oh job. Oh my god, server. there you go. That's Slosser lost again. Flat back combo into the knockdown, followed <laughs> by the rush attack. Beautifully executed by Par. Round and two. Tony. It was all far at the beginning, and it really seems like the difference in aerial <clears throat> mobility you get with Kid Cobra and then the choice to go with the clap back has been the difference in this match so far. So much back. I mean, just as you say it, man, the clap back just saved him. From that rush there, he actually got a perfect in the first round at Slosher. You have to wonder if his momentum's sort of stalling a little bit as far as just showing a dominant performance here. We'll see if Slosher can sort of gather himself. You see him going to the corner, but that only means that's going to give Parra some time to lay down some of those, uh, some of the tubes with the helixes. We'll see if Parra can keep up the offense as Slosher desperately tries to find a way back into this. Slosher running out of pillars to hide behind at this point as Parra is winning the hide and seek game at this They're moment. Out of pillars. 55 seconds left. Both fighters been a Looks little like bit patient screwed. in this particular round. Slosher with the rush attack, but then here comes one from Parra. Oh my and god. And again here, EE -E able to negate a rush attack with one of their own. About it. That's, the, you know, that's one of the big benefits, obviously, being able to rush attack mashup. So huge and so prevalent, and you're seeing already uh, Parra is yet again setting himself up to be in a pretty good situation like that blinder really not doing too much damage i think one thing that you know slosh is probably looking for is, is how can i slow the car down at any given point and it's just not happening he just keeps advancing trying to push the game state in his favor and it's working out yet again slosher in familiar territory end of a round with the rush attack ready to go gonna wise up and not let it go to waste but oh my god after blocking the rush attack cody para kid cobra the feet work as we like to say Excellently played, just beautifully played. Textbook hit around the pillar, yes. waited for his opportunity, waited for the arms to be done, throwing out that grab. Just that was textbook. That was beautiful. These guys are veterans, and you can tell that Para has so much experience. The guy started as a spring man, now he's over to Ninjara, and now we're showing his proficiency with Kid Cobra. This kid is amazing. Yeah, and EE, -E, really the mobility difference that we're seeing with Kid Cobra. And here oh my God. Trying to wrap this thing up here, and here we go, a heavyweight. Slosher changed stage, his character to, to Master Mummy. We know about the super armor, and that's going to make a big difference, EE, -E, if you can get Kid Cobra into the corner somehow. Absolutely. I mean, oh, this is pretty much old reliable for, uh, for Slosher at the moment. I kind of see how he kind of forced his hand at the moment. The thing is, though, you're all, you're giving up a lot of speed advantage, but, you know, you'll be able to take a lot of those hits, obviously being a heavyweight uh, that Slosher, or excuse me, that Master Mummy does fall into, but still, for Brap, he's got to be licking his chops at the chance to end this. Biffler and Funchuck, the choice of arms for Slosher. Can't follow up on the combo off the springs on the side of Spring Stadium here, but so far, Slosher finding some success with the big, huge mummy. And here you go, Coney. You want to close things out by getting them backed into a corner. He's just dominating right now. You can see the massive power of Master Mummy coming out here. He does oh have a strong grab as well, so that's always going to be a threat for Para as he does way more off a single grab. Slosher almost has that rush. You can tell Para trying to close it out. Will it be enough? Not oh my god. He's going to get the bounce, but that's not going to be enough to Para's get gonna be close. Having the rush, he's going to let Para's it going to win, yeah. And, Para, and I thought Para was going to lose. Saw that coming from a mile away, dashing out immediately. Dang. Slosher getting a little desperate there. Para. One round away from advancing to winter finals. Slosher still sticking with the Biffler and the Funchuck. For Para, it's been all reliable with the clap back as well as the popper. You got that defensive option and then a huge hitbox with the popper as well, too. Slosher trying to be a little oh patient early on with Master Mummy, but gets bounced off the side of the stage. Para can't answer back. And Slosher trying to close the gap here at EE, -E, and here comes that 200 throw. Yeah, it's, you know, you, you kind of see him kind of jump out and kind of get a little bit of damage being attacked on, but it's so, like, you look back to that last match, it's got to be so debilitating that you're up so big, and Parra still found a way to bring it out. This loadout is just, it perfectly complements Kid Cobra, what he's trying to do, rush you down, he's got the speed to back it up, and then just the defensive options when needed. Of course, Popper going to go ahead and let that rush flow right now. Not going to get too much off it, but the pressure, that's what he's looking for, and that's where he's finding a lot of success. 
Slosher with a rush attack ready to roll, trying to connect here. No luck. And oh, a little bit of damage here, though, Coney. 250, that's just enough. And is able to get a little bit of chip damage on the follow-up combo. So here's Slosher getting Para backed into a corner, finally. He's doing great right now, using that imposing size of Master Mummy. Just threaten him in the corner again oh. and again. The 110 will do it. And now Slosher Dang. putting one on the board. Para got Mummy. knocked Can out. Can take it away here on Spring Stadium? Try to win this set, even it up 2-2. That's the old, Slosher he's going to win the last alive, one. Here comes Para looking for double That's who's going to win the last one. Try and get some knockback here, EE. -E. You got to send Master Mummy on his caboose to free Come up Come on, Para, take out Master right Mummy. Exactly. Oh, oh. 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 Look at that, just that immediate follow-up gets the extra bounce. Yes, sir, right off of that bumper. So that's going to be pretty tough uh, going, setting off the pace for Slosher, man. This guy is obviously not playing around. I love the fact he did commit Dang, to bring oh out the my match. God. Look how much success yeah. he's found. We thought Par was in position to wrap this thing up. We might have a match number five looming if this pace could be. Oh my God, Par is going to lose again. Oh, Slosher doing a fine job with that big body, avoiding a couple of those toasters oh, and so following up with the fun chuck. Maybe using so Master Mummy, maybe, maybe using Master Tony Mummy was Slosher's game. strategy. Who's going to go ahead and take this match? Slosher now retaliating with a character change of their own, and Master Mummy being the key to this one. You saw him dodge into it. He actually jumped right into that hit. There's no reason for him to go that way, but you could tell the pressure was just mounting on Para. He had to find a way out of the corner, and unfortunately, that door was closed. So now, you wonder what it's going to be like in the fifth game. I mean, switching from a mobile character, uh, something that's a little different like Lola Pop, such a weird niche character, something like Master Mommy, does require a bit of a mindset shift, but it seems like Slosher is fully in that mode now. Is he going to stick with it? Yes, he is. But Para switching over to Old Faithful and Springman. Oh, Springman. Oh, Springman. <laughs> Trying to hold Let's it down at home. Para's strategy. Going to use both of those roasters right now at this point. Trying to build up some of that knockback. Master Mummy and Slosher. No changes except you see a Tri-Blast coming out now with that fun shot. Master Mummy and Slosher was able to turn things around last time. Forcing a character change out of Para. Let's see if Para has the answer with Springman. Slosher, though, already on the ropes here in EE. You see Para just terrific mobility with Springman, doing a good job of just reading those arms coming out from Slosher and countering quickly. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you see the, the parry, the shockwaves he's able to put out, too. Like, that's right there is probably when he's kind of... Uh, oh! Knockout! Maybe Para... So it looks like Springman was one of the best strategies that Para can use. Double roaster getting it done at this point. Para has to take one more round to move along in our winner's final as they advance in the bracket. Slosher getting knocked back already, and that knockback has been so critical for Para to finally establish that. Gives them a chance to charge up those arms and apply that consistent pressure, Tony. Punch him! Yeah, and you can see just back to basics sometimes is best. Para has not been touched in this game. Let's the rush fly. Slosher's going to get one of his own. He does get the full damage, but it's so interesting because, you know, we're told that there's no real protagonist in the arms universe, but time and time again, Springman has come out when players need it most. And just the double roaster here, just paying so many dividends here against Slasher Whaler, who has no answer. He has part in the corner. Let's see if he can force a final round. Not sure if he's going to be able to do it, though. He can't land any of these hits. Oh, Slosher's dang. Slosher's struggling to find some consistent connections. Finally gets a few right there, but has a lot of ground to make up. 38 seconds. Double roaster's coming out. Oh. Slosher trying to regain some health. Here comes the rush attack from Para. Unable to do much there, though, and a rush oh. attack coming oh from Oh, my Slosher. God. Watch out. Can Watch out. Connect? No, they don't. You see both those arms in trouble. Oh, Para, it's going to be Para here, EE, -E, answering back with Springman. Finding all the solutions with Dang. those double roasters and moving on. That I is so cool. Hung in there a little longer than I was expecting. That, that was a cool match. We saw um, Springman making his debut, but it was pretty clear. Like Par, like he's shown to be an expert uh, class in multiple arms characters. I think that's something that's really going to help him throughout this bracket. And I believe he just qualified for winners final, so obviously doing something correct. <laughs> A terrific match we saw go down to the fifth and final game here, Coney. And what you really see is the character balance in arms. We yeah. saw five different characters, I think, if I was counting correctly, during that entire match. Yeah, you saw Para switch over to three different characters out the set. I mean, starting off with Ninjara, 
then over to Kid Cobra and finally ending things with Springman. Being able to have that level of adaptability to give it a shift as much as he is is, is no small feat. And uh, it's interesting because you see some players that will just do that, that will sort of shift depending on what they need. And you have some players like Astro Ninja that just has the one, right? He's just playing Dr. Coil. I'm sure he can play other characters at a proficient level, but why do it when Dr. Coil just does so many things that you need? Um, it, it's super interesting to see how these guys sort of hedge their bets in terms of bringing their best character forward into a set. Let's go ahead and take a look at the updated bracket here as we've completed our second match. And so now All right, we have so our Astro Ninja is going to go against Para and SQ and Slosser World are going to go against each other in the loser's semifinals. So up next, we will have a final will take the first seat in the grand finals. And to Coney's point here, he, he, you saw Dr. Coyle with Astro Ninja really do a fine job of retaking control of that match against SQ. But for Para, really, you have so many different characters you can go with so many different variables so it will be interesting i imagine to see how para answers the consistency of astro ninja as we get set for grand finals i think for para it's going to be a lot of maybe trial and error at the start just knowing that you do have a couple of different options to kind of throw right now you know astro ninja he's just giving you one look with the dr cool and for good reason he pretty much has everything you could ask for in a character obviously you can uh customize and have your arms uh suited for whatever kind of battle you're going up against but for me, um, I think Para, I, I would love to see him kind of start with the Kid Cobra right off the bat. I think that might be like his best option. I did like it. I appreciate his loadout with the clap back and the pop. But, you know, we'll see. You never quite know what somebody has. Maybe he'll have a fourth character for us to check out as well. Like with this guy. All right. <laughs> you can you never, never know. know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's head to the scrap we got, yard. Uh, we have a nice little balance of some undulation. You see the higher the players ground on one side going against each other. The two pillars in the middle. Para so and Astro Ninja. In the scrap yard All here. right. Home of Mechanica. But we see those double roasters coming out for Ninjara early on. Double toasters for Astro Ninja. So both characters. Hold on. Why, why is Para not Tony using really either... Yeah, they just want to go for the straight arms. Either they Cobra Man or kind of curving. They just kind of want to Spring play Man. this honest game. And you saw it pay very well for Para in that last game. Maybe. He just went the double roasters against uh, Slusher Whalers. So we'll see if he can do it again. Right now, Astro Ninja controlling the high ground. Para going to take a breather behind that pillar. Because it should fall in just a second. But this is kind maybe of a he's, slow maybe his, first match. Maybe I would not be surprised this one actually the with the time of 52 on... seconds left. I was going Astro to say, Ninja's both character. fighters really patient about hopping into the pool here. Yeah. You see, they are still well above 75% health. They both have a rush meter ready to go. You figure that'll engage some of the aggression. But they're perfectly content just waiting oh away. Oh my god. Even both rush meters come out. They both have the rush meters. We're waiting for somebody to connect a punch. Yeah, really, because at the start of things, like, it, it doesn't, I feel like on this stage, like, yeah, high ground's a thing, but because of the pillars you have early on, it doesn't necessarily give you the, the biggest of advantages, and that's kind of helped. Uh, just the delay and then getting rid of them has kind of delayed us actually getting this some really good aggression. Now you see the last 20 seconds, some hits finally starting to connect. But I got a feeling this one might be going down to time. It looks like Astro Ninja is going to be on the receiving end of a W if it continues this course. He might be electing to just hold on to that rush as well. No reason to exhaust it. And I think we're going to see a pretty safe decision here. Yeah, Astro one. Ninja doing a fine job just waiting out. Para time. Getting enough Let's see who wins. To. And so Astro Ninja oh, will so go Astro ahead Ninja sit back wins. and cackle as the sands pour out of the time glass here. And now we'll get set for our second round. Astro Ninja taking the first one courtesy of time. You wonder if Para here, Kony, will start to attack a little bit more aggressive early on, not wait for the, about the 45-second mark. It's tough because it's such a big stage. Astro Ninja has shown that he can just control that space so well. They were going blow for blow early on, even up to those rushes. I mean, one uh, Astro Ninja, I think, engaged in a rush, and then Para immediately did the counter rush to block it. But I think Astro Ninja is just very slowly outpacing Para. And even when Para tries to chase him down, as you can see him going to the high ground, Astro Ninja is holding back, using that third arm, levitating, just not giving him any Oh room, my god. Grabbing him out of the Dang. rush. Dang, she grabbed Astro him. Ninja throwing Para out of the rush attack, and it is all Astro Ninja at this point. I don't even think Astro Ninja has been touched at this moment. Such a large stage, once again, really puts Para in a difficult position. Yeah, no doubt about it. And just look at the, uh, like where he left to attack from, always making sure he's maintaining that high ground situational advantage and i think that's one thing that Para has yet to be able to overcome and it's really hard to do because you're essentially a force of vision you have to commit right now you're the one uh with just a chunk of health left and yeah. astro ninja sitting pretty we're still not even sure this man has been touched at the moment i mean can, i'm just trying to get something to connect at the, at the current time but astro ninja may have none of it 
Astro Ninja still fresh as a daisy. Hasn't been touched yet. Here comes the rush attack by Para, but clearly outspaced. Sure. There's a little bit of chip damage at that point. So Astro Ninja just perfectly content to sit up high and might even go for the rush attack to put the icing on this one, but doesn't. And it's going to be all Astro Ninja as time runs out. So two matches that go the full 99 seconds, but Tony, sometimes it doesn't matter if you get a KO. You just got to wait out your opponents. Yeah, that was just big BM at the end. Pops the rush, doesn't even throw a punch. Just to assert dominance there. And you saw Para just, just, just out of uh, something. Give me something. Please let this rush connect. I think that was a mix of a very bad stage for yep. Ninjara in that matchup specifically. And a very good character from Master Ninja playing Dr. Coil. Widely considered to be the best character in the game. I think it's uncontested. Um, and I think he just played to Dr. Quill's strength so well, playing backward, playing defensively. We'll see if things go any differently here at DNA Lab. DNA Lab, smaller stage, less room to hide here, but Astro Ninja using some of those pillars early on for some protection, throwing those arms around him as well, too. Not any changes in the arms that we see, double roasters, double toasters, respectively. Astro Ninja getting bopped just a second ago. And EE, -E, you really have to credit Astro Ninja for their capability to just avoid getting hit regardless of the stage. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, Astro Ninja's evasion, you know, being able to be so evasive is something that's just clearly uh, going to carry him even further. And the fact that, he, look how he's just kind of playing around uh, these pillars right here on DNA Lab as well. Like, he's just somebody who just takes his time. He's already got his rush ready to go. And you can pretty much guarantee when he lets it whip, he's going to get some value out of it. I believe That's Astro Ninja is going to go to the grand okay. final. Uh, the point is, though, <laughs> still playing a very solid game. Para doing a good job of knocking Astro Ninja out of that rush attack. Para has a rush attack ready to go, unleashes it, and finally able to connect here, Cody, and put a little pressure on Astro Ninja. I was just about to say, he needs to let that go because rush economy is so important in this game. If you don't let it go and start working on another one, the opponent could get two, sometimes even three rushes before you even get the single one out if you're a little bit too like discerning about when you want to pull the trigger. Astro Ninja playing a little bit more offensively now. Back in Para into the corner. We have not seen this from him yet, changing up his style. He does have the rush, but Para is working on one of his own. Para doing a good job of connecting with a couple of those roasters, and Para now playing with the lead, and you see how it changes what Astro Ninja's trying to do. Rush Dang. attack. Astro Ninja to steal oh, my God. The last second, and it looks like Astro oh, Ninja. Oh, Astro Ninja's just close. At the end with the rush attack, EE, -E, and able to turn things so quickly with a perfectly timed rush attack. Hey, you said he was trying to steal it. Round two. We just witnessed, okay? Because he, like the, he, just, he was so consistent with keeping the pressure on in that corner. He just saw the one opportunity to strike at his rush, and that's why that Tony pointed out, rush economy. So important to manage that and always have it on deck for pivotal situations like that. Perfect execution. And Coney, it seems like if you're Mara, you really have to make sure you get the lead early on because it really dictates how Astro Ninja plays. And I, I, not only that, but I think the mental game is so important here, man. Para has constantly been chasing Astro, just this cat and mouse game. And even when he gets the rush, he just gets knocked right out of it. Meanwhile, Astro Ninja's full rush is good. Well, maybe not that last hit, but most of the rush is going to connect as Para is just trying to chase this dude down over and over. Astro Ninja just seems to be one step ahead at every spot. I just wonder if this is sort of a, a character shift we might need to see from Para. Because I'm not sure if Ninjara... Or, yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to keep up. Yeah, we saw Para switch from Ninjara to Kid Cobra in their last match and find a lot of success here. But Para <clears throat> trying to find some answers. Astro Ninja in total control, looking to claim this second round to go ahead and win two games. Both rush attacks come out. It's going to be Astro Ninja. Lands a glancing blow with 25 seconds left. Para against the rope. So at this point, Astro Ninja just needs one solid connection or two to take this one and does with the right handed toaster. And Astro Ninja will claim the second game here. He, he. What these, an I epic mean, finish. You know, no slight the par, uh, par. We know how talented he is, but these are pretty convincing wins from Astro Ninja. So you kind of got to wonder do you, you know, with your back against the wall now, maybe it's time to kind of go in that duffel bag, look in that duffy, and see what else I can yeah. pull out. Because the, the Ninja is just not hitting right now. Quite literally, the damage just isn't there. And that's what we're seeing from Astro Ninja, Coney, just a fine job of claiming that lead early on, forcing Para to be the aggressor. Because, once again, with Dr. Coyle, you've got so much mobility, you can sit back and Spring oh, Man Coyle's coming out. Uh, Let's see if Spring Man can get Para back into this one. They'll be here at Buster Beach, which might provide a bit of an advantage for Astro Ninja if you can 
And Para is using his best yeah, strategy. I'm wondering how this is going to go because this stage is simultaneously, it's, it's just, it's very long, but it's very narrow. So I think Para's job here is going to be trying to corner Astro Ninja around mm. this little table we have in the center and trying to find ways to keep the pressure up. Like you said, an early lead is so important, trying to force Astro Ninja to come to you. We'll see if Para can make that happen right now, playing this very slow, using that powered-up dodge to knock away the arms. But Astro Ninja, true to form, getting an early lead and just trying to keep Para blocking. Astro Ninja closing the gap. He's been sitting on that rush attack as a comfortable lead over Para right now. Para really wants to connect with their own rush attack to finally try and take the lead and force Astro Ninja to be a little bit more aggressive. On the other side in the corner here, Kony. Continue to talk about the way that Para gets knocked back into the corner. You got to get out of there and apply some pressure on Astro Ninja. It's so scary, though, because him coming in basically forces him now into a position where he's up close. You see this? He's trying to, like, circle oh. around. And he gets knocked out of the rush again. That's kind knocked of like out of the, the rush? That is and crazy. Is set that we've seen Astro Ninja just dominating performance. But Para is now not in a position where he can really close this distance safely. He sort of has given up uh, so much in terms of timing, and now with only 10 seconds left, he needs a Hail Mary to take this one away. I think this is just an easy dub for Astro Ninja. Yeah, Astro Ninja here, EE, he, as this one closed out, has no problem at all just sitting on that rush attack and wants to utilize that to take the quick lead all right, who in won? the second round. So Astro Ninja... E.E. just one round away from moving on to Grand Wait, Finals. Who won that? Yeah, we've seen a lot of these contests, uh, Jordan, go down to the wire, and, and it's been incredible. I wasn't even, this one I wasn't even paying Finals attention. Things, like, it has just been a dominant performance from Astro Ninja, and I think uh, he's just about ready to put this one to bed. You know, kudos to Par. He's fighting as, <laughs> he's fighting as hard as he can, but it's just, just, just no openings being presented. That's the thing that he's been sitting on. Uh, these rush attempts that just have not been successful. So when all your abilities are just in attempts are pretty much futile at this point, it's like, where do I go from here? Yeah. Wait a second, though. Para with an early lead. That's going to force the hand of Astro Ninja. Both fighters still with a rush attack ready to go. And now it looks like the patient's starting to pay off for Para here, Kony. Yeah, he's looking good. The problem is that Astro Ninja has shown he's got a couple different forms, but this first one seems to be under control, at least thus far for Para. He's going to want to try to have some kind of combo into a rush, but it can be hard with the double roaster. Tried to guess on the left dash. It's not going to come out, but no harm, no foul. Doesn't land, doesn't get hit himself. 50 seconds left on the clock. Para has not been touched outside of a bit of chip damage. This is looking very strong for him. Para, once again, another knockdown with the roaster. So Para, able to create a little bit more space, doing a good job of reading Astro Ninja. Astro Ninja, still waiting on that rush attack, choosing when to use it. Might wait until the next round when they have a little bit more of an even advantage. Has no problem maybe giving up this round here, EE, e., because you know that third one, you've got a rush attack ready to roll. Exactly, and I think, you know, just given the nature of how this set has progressed, you know, Astro Ninja, there's no reason to have any shortage of confidence. You might drop the round right now, but still, yeah. you know that coming into that third one, you should be the favorite. You should be the one in the advantage, uh, 10, advantageous 9, situation. 8, so you're going to go 7, ahead and price both of you guys just elected to take one to those rushes. Yeah, obviously, Mara <laughs> uh, has no reason one. to let his go. Astro Ninja has no reason to let his go to get to that third game. Who we'll won that again? Dancing out the final song of this one as we get set for the third round. So Astro Ninja, a victory here will move them along to grand finals for Para. A win means you force a game four. Astro Ninja has yet to use a rush attack in this entire game as at this point. Para still sitting in the corner. And we saw Para really make the change of being a little bit more patient and being able to connect with some of those charge roasters while perfectly reading Astro Ninja. And we see the same thing again here, Kony. I think he's super buckled down here. He's not going for anything crazy. He's playing Astro Ninja's game, and currently he's beating him at it. Neither of these rushes being used, but Para is just <clears throat> guessing where Astro Ninja is going to go and then knocking him every time. Astro Ninja now forced on the offensive. You can see him levitating in somewhat, but still these rushes oh, are being hit. Oh, dang. He's going to get 320 from it, and he needs the farm another one because Astro Ninja is going to be swinging in just a second. Oh, Para could really harvest a rush attack at this oh, point. Oh, payback. With a terrific follow-up, 330. Now that's he's going down. Have to be aggressive. A critical game is at stake here. Astro Ninja wants to move along. Para wants to keep things rolling here. And now we see more of the arms coming out here. E -E. Oh, man, Para was looking like the greatest underdog story that we've seen of the day so far. But Astro Ninja has quickly gone ahead and just kind of usurped him. 
now just a little bit of percent left on him. This is going to be a clean down to the wire finish. And Astro Ninja, keep in mind, has that rush, but so does Hara. So anybody who lets that thing play first could be the victor in this situation. 14 seconds left. Both characters with their rush attack ready to go. It's going to be Para unleashing it. Misses, attack. though, so Astro Ninja could just sit back and unleash an assault at this point. Oh, and Astro Ninja 3-0. Moving on to grand finals, but Para gave us so one Ar of So Astro Ninja to is Tony. going to the grand that finals. So, that was such an uncomfortable position for Para, as you saw there. He needed to land one final hit. You don't normally want to challenge a rush in that kind of scenario. You want to block, wait it out, take your chip damage, but, you know, not try to go for anything. But with the timer being what it was, he was forced to act. Uh, it, you could tell that Astro Ninja really forced his hand there, and Para just... He just couldn't land that final hit to knock him out of the rush. Heartbreaker. That last game, we could see Para a beginning to be so much stronger. He si finally seemed to figure it out, but just was not quite enough. Astro Ninja takes the set. Cody, I appreciate all of the arm expressions right there with block and rush. I'm, and I'm feeling <laughs> it, bro. I'm just like, I'm all over the place. I love it. I love it. Let's take a look at the updated bracket here as we finally have our first spot in grand finals. All right. That'll be so, Astro Ninja losers final. Nelson Para to losers it, final. Has we'll Para take a break in it. right now, but when we come back, it'll be a skew versus Slosher Whale Lord as we figure out who will be facing off against Para in losers finals. You're checking out the Arms North American Open August 2020. We'll be back in a moment. Alright, so that was my rec my reaction to part one of the match. And it was really fun. I can't wait to see what what's gonna happen tomorrow. Alright, this is Gaming God. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and see us.